what is up YouTube today we are going to be doing a deep dive on Broman on how he's going to be impacting the Guild War meta as he's recently got buffed and uh, this is more so for defense a little bit of offense sprinkled in the video but mostly this will help you guys in defense as the season is coming to an end so hopefully you guys can incorporate this into your guys Guild War defenses whether it be fort or on small tower duty and hopefully you guys can reach top 100 or top 30 whatever goals that you guys have set uh, but anyhow if you guys do enjoy this type of view review content please drop a like and comment below as it really helps me with the algorithm subscribe if you haven't already and let's just jump straight into the first part of the video all right so the first thing that we want to talk about broman right is what makes him so strong right now his s1 has an ability as you guys can see to trigger an extra attack which can land silence, right? So if you combat this with, you know, units that have dual attack, maybe it's a Conqueror Lilius, maybe it's a Fire Lilius, whatever the case may be, right? This poses as a really strong threat because he can land silences and decrease CR for the enemy team. But not only that, imagine you have Abyssal Crown. Imagine you have Ayala Violin. Like, this is going to allow him to really shine because he can CC lock you to death, right? Now, I think one of the buffs as well, obviously, is the S2. Now, personally, for me, I don't think the S2 is super impactful. Um, obviously, when he first got buffed and the patch notes came out, we thought, okay, well, this is kind of like anti zeal right? But his base speed is really slow, right? So, ideally, the S2 is only really beneficial if you're going to be running comps on offense, where it's like, you know, Green Pavel, uh, Broman holding a book, and Commander Pavel, right? Where you can kind of double, like, Soulburn S2 with Pavel S3, trigger the C Pavel, and then S3, right? Because Zeo can't push him back, that is kind of a good thing, but he's mainly just going to be like a tank in that case, right? But uh, for that comp, obviously, you can run units like Gloomy Rain, Sylvian Sage. Uh, they're going to be uh, just as good, if not better, than Broman in that case, right? Because Gloomy Rain also gives that speed buff, or sorry, speed imprint. Um, that's all about it for S2. But for S3, this is where he's really strong, right? S3, you can strip two buffs. You can land a Death Break. You can land a Silence. And obviously, it's random. But like, you won't be guaranteed 6 out of 6. But it's still really strong because, again, like we mentioned in S1, if you're pairing this with uh, artifacts like Abyssal Crown and you stick that stun and the enemy can't take a turn and they're Death Broken, just imagine how much damage you're going to be able to do to the enemy when they're attacking you right so that's just it the kit itself is just beautiful beautiful for guild war defense because there's just like so many layers of rng added on to it that you really don't have a super safe option um attacking him or you know so but anyway that's all i want to kind of go over about the kit uh let us go into a guild war defense perspective and see why he really shines all right, and since we're talking about Guild War defense, I'm just going to give you some example teams that you can run. I think we'll give you three. So I'm going to show the first unit in the team. So we're going to be running a fast Senya on Warhorn, and you can go Gap E. And she's 240 speed, obviously. And the idea in this comp is we have Broman falling right behind the Senya at 227 speed with really high effectiveness. Um, this artifact, you can run something maybe say like Curse Compass, Ayala Violin, uh, Sierra Ren, uh, whatever you really have available, right? Um, you can kind of play around and see what works. Um, and then also we have Fire Lilius, who is going to be on Portrait, and S3 Damage E with Torrent Set, right? So the whole idea behind this comp is Senya's going to move first, and then Broman's going to move, and then Broman moves, lands a Death Break, and then Lilius S3 pretty simple right like you're basically gonna die and if you wanted to kind of juice up your team a bit more the good thing about broman on defense is you can put attack imprint for your team right so give an extra 10 percent attack to your senya it's huge right if you have any imprints on lilius like that's even bigger right so you can really um take advantage of that by giving your senya as much attack as possible and just kind of throw it in damage calculator see how much damage it does and i promise you this will get you wins i promise you right maybe not in top three maybe but if you're in the top 10 top 30 top 100 top 500 this i promise you this will get you wins okay but let us move over into team number two so that you guys have some more examples all right so the second team i have cooked up is going to be spirit ice selene rimuru and broman now spirit ice selene is just going to be on a fast build on pen set with silver rain and i'll explain why we have silver rain in just a second obviously you know it gives attack buff to the highest attack unit and in this case, who will be receiving the attack buff? It's going to be Rimuru, okay? Now, Rimuru is going to be on a full nuke build. I know, I know, my Selene could be faster, your Selene could be faster, my Rimuru could have more damage, more speed, more bulk, 
it's fine. But this is just about giving you guys the idea and you guys go ahead and run with it, okay? So remember, Rimuru's S3 actually scales off of how many buffs that your team has. So Spirit Isolate is really good because Silver Rain not only gives him attack buff, but also will provide immortality buffs to the entire team, which means his S3 is going to go even more nuclear. And I'll pop his damage calculation on screen now and how much damage that he'll do to a like a crowd, for, say for example, right now. That crowd's dead. That crowd is absolutely dead, right? There's just really no way he can survive. Um, and then the third unit that we're going to be running is Benevolent Roman. Okay. Now I switched his build a little bit, right? Previously, you guys, you guys saw it was like a a bit faster with a bit lower effectiveness. But this one, we're going to go for the full, just lock him down, right? So we're running with 280 effectiveness plus Curse Compass. This is going to give you an extra 50 effectiveness at the start of the battle. So we're going to give you 330 effectiveness to land that S3. Right now, who has a Destina that can go 430 ER? Who has a Destina that can even or Singeful Angelica that can make 400 ER? Basically, nobody, right? Um, I don't like. I can't. I don't know anyone that also can, right? So we're obviously going to pray that he lands S3. And yes, I know you can get 15 percented. Things cannot land. Maybe you land Silence and not Death Break. But we have to play the odds, right? And the odds will eventually be in our favor at some point, right? So the idea here is Celine's gonna S3, we get like five buffs, Rimuru's gonna pop S3 with attack buff, eventually he's gonna be slow. So if they do take a turn, if they do hit us, we can nuke them with S2 because it's still gonna do 17.5k damage. And Broman's gonna be there to just put that lockdown in so that they're not gonna be able to do anything, right? Silenced, death broken, let's just, let's just ruin their day in that sense, right? Uh, but that's just another idea I got cooked up on my alt account. Uh, let's go over one more. All right, so the next defense I'm going to be showing is Arrowell, Candy, and Broman. So Arrowell is going to, first of all, be on a immunity set with Adam and Shield. And as you guys know, Arrowell does give a passive barrier to all light units at the start of the match, which we're going to be taking advantage of. And our Emo Landy is going to be on Proof of Valor with immunity as well on injury set. Now, I'm going to explain the comp don't worry i know it looks crazy but this is the build that i'll be running and then broman is going to be on a uh, sierra ren with immunity and also speed set okay so i'm going to explain what my idea behind this comp is okay so arrow obviously provides barrier to the entire team right when you look at this comp what are you thinking you're either probably thinking arunka or you're probably you're or thinking if you're some lunatic some people in top 30 top 100 uh, I speak from experience. People just want to rank leave you. They just want to get Guild War over with ASAP. And if that's the case, perfectly fine by me, right? So the reason why we are running immunity in all three units is because uh, ML Landy is going to be giving us anti-crit, okay? And then we're going to get immunity on all three units, which we have from our set. And then we also have barrier from Airwall. Now, Rand, if they S2, S3, even if they soul burn, they're going to strip the anti-crit and the barrier, but they're not going to strip the immunity, which means... The enemy is going to have to try to kill you with Ida, right? With no death breaks. With Adam and Shield present. Landy can salvo. It's pretty unlikely they're going to, they're going to kill you, right? Um, but the idea behind my comp is basically it's going to be anti runka so the candy can't die. It's going to be anti-DC because we will live with our barrier if they try to reset and they try to one-shot the candy. That's not going to happen. You can't rank leave because we have too many buffs on our team. So because you can only strip two... The immunity sticks on, so Rand Cleave is just out of the question as well. Um, you could maybe try Knockwell Cleaving it. I, I I don't know. I don't I don't have a whole lot of experience fighting against Knockwell uh, offenses, but just you can't prep for everything in defense, right? You have to kind of identify like what are the common offenses that are going to be used against you, and you want to prep your defense accordingly based off that, right? If it looks very cleavable, make it really hard to cleave. If it looks like something that they can just you know, strays, right? There's Snow Crystal, there's Holy Sack. There's a lot of different things that you can do, right? Um, just to name a few things. Um, but yeah, that's my third sample defense that I've come up with. So hopefully that helps out a little bit, but let's just wrap it up into our closing thoughts of today. Alrighty guys, so that's gonna basically sum it up for this video. But uh, if there's anything I want you guys to take away from this video is Roman's really good on defense, right? You can, like, I, like I've shown you, right? With Senya Lilius, you have the Death Breaks, really strong. You have a bunch of different um, artifact options that you can choose from, like Curse Compass, Abyssal Crown, Ayala Violin, Sierra Ren, just to name a few. And 
he's just really versatile and people really sleep on him. People really think that he's not that good and we haven't really seen him come to rise just yet. But I hope with this video that does change your mind that you guys will start building your Broman. You will start investing into him. And guess what? He can also be put in grace of growth. So if you don't want to spend the molas, you don't want to spend the dogs, hey, I get it. Free to play. I totally understand, right? So what you can do instead, put him in grace of growth. You don't need S1 to be mola. Just you need S2 and you need S3. You get plus 12. You're good to go, right? Um, but in the case you do build him, because he is a four star, he is going to cost less resources, right? So that's less runes, less molas. It's just it's just a good time, right? You can never complain when you can save a bit of resources whilst having a really good impact on the unit that you build. Um, but honestly, yeah, I think uh, this is... Uh, I'll wrap it up here, and if you guys did enjoy this type of video, please consider dropping a like and comment, and let me know your thoughts below. Um, obviously, I I try to answer all my comments, so please leave a comment and say hi. And if you, if you don't know already, join my Discord. You know, let's let's be friends. And yeah, uh, happy Guild War, and I hope you guys all have a great day. And thanks for watching. So yeah, take care. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye.